Oh, and we're live. Hello, everyone. I hope your evening is absolutely fantastic. It is very late. It's midnight over here in Perth. Let me know in chat where you guys all uh, coming from, which uh, part of the country. If it's Australia, if it's another country, I'd love to uh, hear from you guys. Now we've got uh, 10 minutes if we switch to the screen. Uh, we've got oh, eight minutes and 50 seconds, and we're gonna get into it very, very slowly. It is cold, I'm actually cold, but I'm gonna roll up my sleeves for this event. And I thought I'd jump on a little bit earlier uh, to talk about some of the uh, leaks that we've had to see what actually is going to come true or what will be true. Now, I know some of you may be disappointed, but Casper is not here with me. He actually has to uh, go to work. I work from home at the moment, so <laughs> I'll just wake up, have a coffee, and off I go. Um, so, unfortunately, it's just me. But uh, I hope to have all of you guys and girls party with me tonight for the next hour or so, or hour and eight minutes and eight seconds. Uh, we've got somebody from Melbourne. I'm sorry, I can't read um, Japanese or Chinese characters. I actually don't know which one that is. Um, we've got Retro Gamers. G'day, mate. Hello. Hello, hello. Um, now, okay. So... If you're new here, it's um, Techman Pat, and my name is actually Pat. It's not like a fake name, which is great. Um, Melbourne, so that's 4 a.m., isn't it? Pretty sure it's 4. God, you must be really excited for this. England, what time is it in England? Must be, what are they, nine hours? So if we're over here, England's up here, and the sun's kind of down, it must be what? Morning, that's right, it'll be morning, like 9, 10 a.m. I remember calling England, um, have a few calls with a few clients over there. What a, what a fun country. <laughs> I did visit London a little while back, it was beautiful, except the weather, everything else was beautiful. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, 2 a.m., there you go, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, let's, I wanna, so, there's a couple, I didn't have a plan for this, I actually wasn't going to do it, I thought it's a bit late, but. Why not? Um, so we've got um, oh, nearly five o'clock in the morning. Oh, afternoon, is it? Oh, yeah, because it would have been like three o'clock afternoon for 9 a.m. over there. Yeah, okay. My bad. Um, so a couple of things we saw throughout the week, and this was obviously already released by NVIDIA, and it was the compact 12-pin connector, which will, you'll need an adapter if you want to connect your current power supply. Um, one thing to note, you will not need a new power supply at all. It's not like they're actually making one piece of hardware that all of a sudden will force you to buy another piece of hardware. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. I'm gonna take this off for now. But the other thing is the pricing, right? Uh, g'day, Joseph. G'day, Geordie. Hi, hi, everybody. Um, we're just talking about the connectors. So um, what you'll probably find is that you'll have two eight pins uh, they'll go down to this 12 compact one, which is actually smaller, so you'll need an adapter. The gauge, the wire gauges are probably gonna be a bit thicker, which means that they'll be able to push a f bit more power from my understanding so far, reading what they've released. Obviously, we'll find out a bit more today. Um, I won't talk too much, we've got six minutes to go. And, um, you know, Zotac showed some of their images. I think they've been removed. There you go, there's some Zotac images. And the cars look very futuristic. Like if you guys remember back in the day, um, maybe 2010, they used to make really just cards that were flashy colors and stuff. And then it sort of went back a bit. Asus started making a bit more sleek ones and Nvidia made those founders editions. Like founders, like what? How does the Nvidia model, business model really work when you, you're, you're selling a product yourself and then you're, giving the chip design to other manufacturers. What's, who else does that? Google, I suppose, with software. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, Nvidia, it's a unique model because obviously they build uh, chips for like powerhouses up in the enterprise level, you know, servers and whatnot. And even, I think there's a P1 that would work with Tesla. Yeah, so they'll break it down, bin the die chips and so on. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. So. A couple of things that we had as, uh, I suppose, leaks. But what I want to talk about uh, before we get into the details of what NVIDIA is actually going to be releasing is the prices. So in Australia, and some of you are from England, um, Joseph, good day, mate, where are you from? Uh, we're just asking who was where. Um, but the prices are 
pretty ridiculous. So it's 1400 American dollar for the GTX, th oh no, sorry, not GTX, RTX 3990. And that is ridiculous. I mean, that's what, two and a half thousand dollars, give or take exchange, and then potentially costs around shipping and maybe even there's a margin for the actual reseller, right? Like let's take PLE or M-Wave or MSY. Who else would sell? Oh, there's PC parts gear. Um, Jordi, Netherlands. Good on you, mate. Welcome. I have been to the Netherlands on a, I did a trip around Europe. Absolutely loved it. Did a bike tour around um, and obviously went to the red light district on a tour to have a look. Um, a lot of stories there, but probably inappropriate of what we saw. Inappropriate for this stream. Um, and uh, retro Samsung does it with screens and chips. Yes, but yes, you're right. Thank you very much. And LG, right? Because LG also makes screens or do they use Samsung's one? Oh, we've got another gen gentleman from uh, London, England. Fantastic. Well, yeah, obviously not many Australians. It's 4 a.m. on the East Coast, 12, no, sorry, 2 a.m. on the East Coast, 12 over here. Um, well, I hope you guys are gonna have a bit of fun. It'll be really casual. <laughs> I'm expecting to see a lot of numbers, a lot of like tech demos. But um, what I'd ask you guys is let me know in the comments a prediction. Just pick a prediction. There's only what, 20 of us? Oh, 10. I was going to say, there's only 20 of us. There's only like 10 of us. So put a prediction in. We can look back and see who was right. Um, win some kudos. I don't know. Just a thumbs up from me. Thumbs up. <laughs> um, and I'm having a, a, a whiskey with no ice because it was really cold today. So it should warm me up. But I think um, I think my prediction will be that, well, first of all, the 3090s and all those ones are gonna be in very low stock. I've read a little bit about the fact that they're only started production in August. And I think somebody on Discord said that actually, but um, the production of the 3090 is gonna be very low. So if you want the 3090, you're going to have to jump on real quick, like pre get ready to to drop two and a half K and pre-order. Um, uh, speaking of Samsung, I've been waiting for that G9 to arrive in Australia. I ordered it a long time ago, then they had the mishap with the glue, the screen coming unstuck. And so I've been waiting it for it for a while. And I think, I think hopefully Thursday, I am Ile no alcohol for me. If we, but you're, yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, this is uh, apple juice, of course. It'll warm you up. Mm. Okay, two minutes. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts, guys. Are you guys excited for the three thousand? What? I'm just, I'm just so excited. I, mean, I guess my excitement comes from the fact that RTX, the second generation of RTX, was I kind of we all knew. But that second generation is going to be actually good. And for the first time ever, well, I guess this has only been second generation, we'll be able to play full games with high frame rates with RTX on, unlike the first generation of the RTX cards, because, yeah, first generation, it's hard, isn't it? Like any company that creates something for the first time, it has to be scary to go into the market because there's no... First of all, there's no games with it, like what Battlefield 5 had it and Battlefield 5 wasn't that great anyway. And so you, you, you have to think, wow, I'm creating this new thing. I have to get all these developers on the board, all these gamers on board, and I have to create a need for it. Every, you know, And it's not, it's not like it enhances your multiplayer game, so it's not competitive. And it's not like it works on every game that already exists so people pick it up and just turn it on. No, no, it has to be built into the game. And so you have this weird proposition but now the second generation rtx 3000 series is going to be something unique because it's building on top of what's already been built by um by the first generation of rtx um Tritrim has already started has it oh god thank you mmbb9 oh welcome back mate good to see you um can you can you flick me a link mmb9 if you can into the twitch i'll i'll go to twitch um and hopefully it'll probably be on the first page. Uh, I'll just pause any sounds. No, I don't see it. We're probably going to be a minute behind because it's just YouTube being YouTube. Um, but yeah, 
what wallets having nightmares oh everybody's wallets are going to have nightmares even even in europe europe's always been quite expensive for parts i remember traveling through eastern europe oh, eastern europe's the worst but going through there and i remember gtx 1080 was like thousands like quadruple digits of the currency and when i converted over is like completely more expensive that was before the mining boom um switch switch tv twitch tv slash twitch tv slash um nvidia oh sorry god this is nvidia Let's see if i can bring it up um okay well we can't go back so let's i'm kind of keen to just hear it from the start so let's get started let's do it Thank you all for joining this historic fight. We're going to talk about computer graphics and the work we're doing to push the boundaries. We love computer graphics and they invested incredibly in the time of NVIDIA. As the technology advanced, the expressiveness of the medium has made graphics an invaluable tool to help us understand our world, create and explore new worlds, tell stories that inspire us. From science to industry to the arts, computer graphics has made a profound impact on the world. And for that, we are privileged to have contributed. We're gonna talk about gaming and the infinite ways that gaming is expanding. GeForce PC gaming is large and thriving. It's open and rapidly advancing technology combined with the amazing creativity of the community makes magic. Anyone could be a broadcaster now. Add a GeForce and you have a personal broadcast station. Pros stream their practices. Experts stream tips and tricks. Friends stream to friends just to hang out. There are over 20 million streamers. Games have become a new art medium. In Minecraft, gamers can build their work of art. Machinima artists create cinematics made from game assets. Tens of millions are using games to express their creativity. Inside a computer simulation, any sport can become eSport. Wow. Virtual NASCAR and F1 That's are already cool. attracting top racers. Like sports, eSports captures the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat and the human drama of athletic competition. Esports is on its way to be the biggest sport. I have something special for all the GeForce gamers around the world. Four gifts. I hope you like them and you'll find new ways to game. I love First, gifts. <laughs> big news. Fortnite is turning RTX on. Now <laughs> Minecraft and Fortnite, the number one and number two most played games in the world, have RTX on. Fortnite will get ray trace shadows, reflections, ambient occlusion, and DLSS 2. These effects look fantastic with the art style of Fortnite. I can't wait to see a Fortnite concert with RTX on. The last one with Travis Scott was watched by 28 million people. Yeah. Okay. Epic made a trailer for you. Let's play it now. Let's go! Let's Makes go. sense. Seventy-five percent of GeForce gamers play esports. Esports is a game of milliseconds. Reaction time is a combination of the gamer and the machine. Let me explain. This is Valorant. In this example, the opponent is traveling at fifteen hundred pixels per second, and it's visible in this opening for only a hundred and eighty milliseconds. A typical gamer has a reaction time of hundred and fifty milliseconds mm -hmm. from photon to action. Okay. You can only hit this opponent if your PC adds less than thirty milliseconds. Most gamers have latencies far greater than 30 milliseconds, many up to 100 milliseconds. Today, we're announcing a new esports technology called NVIDIA Reflex. NVIDIA Reflex optimizes the rendering pipeline across CPU and GPU to reduce latency by up to 50%. In September, Whoa. we're releasing Reflex with our game ready driver. Over 100 million GeForce gamers will instantly become more competitive. Valorant, Fortnite, Apex Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, 
and Destiny 2 will be the first to integrate reflex technology. At the bottom it says it's done at 1080p, 60 hertz screen. For, zero latency. for you, we're announcing an insanely fast and beautiful display, a 360 hertz G-Sync display designed for eSports. This display has mm -hmm. a built-in precision latency analyzer. Just connect your mouse. The NVIDIA 360 hertz G-Sync eSports displays Jesus are arriving this fall from Acer, Alienware, Asus, and MSI. We've made a video comparing gaming on a 60 hertz, 144 hertz, and 360 hertz display. <laughs> you can see immediately oh, how 360 hertz display will help you target and track an opponent. For the 20 million live streamers, we have something Wasn't really the worst cool for you. Example Nvidia episode. Broadcast turns any room into a broadcast studio. Nvidia Broadcast runs AI algorithms trained by deep learning on Nvidia's DGX supercomputer. So one of the good. most powerful in the world. So good. Effects it works. like audio noise removal, virtual background effects, whether graphics or video. You can get and it running on a, auto framing a as a virtual camera too. person tracking you. These AI effects are amazing. Available for download in September and runs on any RTX GPU. Brandon and GeForce Marketing will now show you NVIDIA Broadcast. Ooh, Brandon. Hey everybody, I'm Brandon and I'm very excited today to talk to you about our NVIDIA Broadcast app. Like many of you, I've been home a lot more lately. I've been video conferencing all day mm -hmm. and then gaming and streaming all night. And I have a very when basic sleep? webcam microphone setup. NVIDIA Broadcast makes these things supercharged with a lot of new awesome features that really bring it out using the power of AI and RTX GPUs. Uh, the first one I wanna talk about is noise removal. So I've asked my girlfriend to join me with a blow dryer here. And that distracting sound makes it very hard to understand what I'm saying. But when I turn on noise removal in NVIDIA Broadcast, you find that it's completely gone. And that, that, that blow dryer is still going. It's pretty NVIDIA impressive. NVIDIA Broadcast isn't just awesome audio features. There's some really exciting video features as well. Let's take a look. First up, we have the ability to blur your background, which you may notice that I need because I have a very cluttered and messy room. But when I turn this background blur feature on, all of a sudden I get this really classy effect. Wow. And I can adjust the strength of that from low to high and everything in between. I'll certainly be using that. Or, if I want, Love it. I can actually replace the background altogether. He's very well lit. Now I'm in a space station with the magic of AI. It's, it's uh, that easy. Yeah, or you have to have good lighting. Or, gameplay, I can remove the background altogether and jump into some Valorant. And now I'm playing with a green screen effect without actually having to have one at home. I don't have to play good, but at least I can look good. <laughs> Very good. Now, sometimes when I'm video conferencing or doing a just chatting stream, I want to zoom in to get a more personal connection with the audience. But the problem is I bounce around so much, it's easy for my head to get out of frame. With the auto frame feature, it's like having your own personal cameraman that follows you wherever you go. Oh, so wow, if, yeah. for example, I wanted to reach over and grab my cool Ballard hat and show it to everybody, it follows me every step of the way. I just find NVIDIA Broadcast to be really exciting, as both a streamer and as someone who works from home. The ability to remove distracting noise, improve your background, and keep yourself in the center of the frame are all awesome features in one app, and I just can't wait for you guys to try it. They're showing you all these features that are on top a of graphics card. A new form of art has emerged More from than games just graphics called the cinema. Artists are using game assets to create cinematics. There has been tens of billions of views on YouTube. Most are shorts. Some are even recreating entire classic movies. It's becoming a whole new art genre. Today, I'm going to show you an app Hollywood that will called make piracy. these so That's Hollywood for you. It's called <laughs> NVIDIA Omniverse Machinima. It's an app built on our Omniverse 3D workflow collaboration platform. Omniverse is a universal design tool asset exchange with a viewer based on photorealistic path tracing. The engine uh, is designed to be physically is. accurate, simulating light, physics, material, and artificial intelligence. We have connectors for most third-party design tools, like 3ds Max, Maya, Photoshop, Epic Unreal, Rhino, and many more. The Machinima app brings in elements and assets from games, and third-party collections like TurboSquid, and lets you mix and compose them into a cinematic. Creators can use their webcam to drive our AI-based post estimator to animate characters. Oh, thank drive God. Drive face animation AI with your voice. Add high-fidelity physics like particles and fluids. Make materials physically wow. accurate. And then when done with your composition and animating is always my pain. Render quality cinematics it. with your RTX GPU. NVIDIA Omniverse Machinima. Beta in October. Sign up at nvidia.com slash machinima. Let me show you a demo we created in a few days. 
We started with assets from Mountain days. Blade 2, Banner Lord. You're going to love this. How many people? <laughs> The animation like for 40 years it's since really a video researcher Turner Whitten first published his paper on ray tracing computer science researchers have chased this dream to create super realistic virtual worlds with real-time ray tracing Nvidia seeing the ultimate limits of rasterization approaching focused intense efforts over the past 10 years to realize real-time ray tracing on a large scale that's animated at SIGGRAPH two years ago we announced mm. the Nvidia RTX now two years later it is clear we have reinvented computer graphics. <laughs> NVIDIA RTX is a full stack invention. RTX starts with a brand new GPU architecture, but it is so much more. It includes new engine tech and a bunch of new rendering algorithms. RTX is a home run. All major 3D APIs have been extended for RTX. RTX is supported by all major 3D tools. RTX mm. tech is incorporated into Finally. all major game engines. Yep. There are hundreds of games in development and thousands of research papers of new rendering and AI algorithms enabled by RTX. The RTX GPU has three fundamental processors. The programmable shader that we first introduced over 15 years ago, RT core to accelerate the ray triangle and ray bounding box intersections, and AI processing pipeline called TensorCore. TensorCore accelerates linear algebra that is used for deep neural network processing, the foundation of modern AI. Mm. AI is the most powerful technology force of our time. Computers that learn from data and write software that no humans can. The advances are nothing short of breathtaking. NVIDIA is doing groundbreaking work in this area. You might have seen our work in self-driving cars and robotics. Computer graphics and gaming will also be revolutionized by deep learning. Let me show you some recent works in the art of the possible. The first video is a generative adversarial network that has learned to synthesize virtual characters of any artistic genre including photorealistic. Second is a neural network that animates a 3D face directly from voice. You require more Vespine gas. <laughs> it's Stock dangerous up. to go alone. <laughs> Take this. The AI character can speak <laughs> in any good. language, be any gender, and even rap and sing. Third is a character locomotion of infinite number of positions. Imagine negotiating arbitrary paths and obstacles. The fourth is reconstructing 3D from video. Imagine the possibilities. Whoa. Record video, interact in 3D. What's a scary future? This one <laughs> a is a deep learning future. model that learned the physics behavior of cloth animation. Finally, this deep learning model of ray tracing can predict colors of missing pixels so that fewer rays need to be cast and fewer pixels need to be fully rendered. We can mm. achieve orders of magnitude speed ups. AI That's why is starting to play a giant role in the future of computer graphics and gaming. The powerful tensor cores and RTX GPUs will let us do AI in real time. One of the first major AI computer graphics breakthroughs is DLSS. Here's the challenge. Real-time ray tracing is far more beautiful but requires a lot more computation per pixel than rasterization. They admitted it. <laughs> so the solution is to ray trace fewer pixels and use AI on tensor cores to mm. up-res, to super-res to a higher resolution and boost frame rate. DLSS took nearly two years of intensive research. We built a supercomputer to train the network. The DLSS model is trained on extremely high quality, 16K, offline 16K. rendered images of many kinds of content. Once trained, the model is downloaded into your driver. At runtime, DLSS 2.0 takes in low resolution, alias image and motion vector of the current frame and the high resolution previous frame to generate a high resolution current frame. Mm. I think DLSS is one of our biggest breakthroughs in the last 10 years. Take a look at these images of Death Stranding, the latest game by Kojima-san. DLSS is sharper than native 4K and created detail from AI that native rendering didn't even show. 
Yeah. And the frame rate is higher. 1440p. Reviewers have loved DLSS 2.0. They say its quality beats out native rendering and runs even faster. You can play at 4K without a performance hit. Tensor Core effectively gives RTX a 2x performance boost. You'll notice speakers Let's look use at one frame trace shape of a hand to see the thumb. processors of it's RTX okay. in action. It's a thing you learn. Adding ray tracing to Speak games like dramatically that. increases the computation workload. Using shaders to do ray traversal and object intersection reduces the frame rate. We added the RT Core, which reduces shader workload by 60%. RT Core offloads the shaders Impressive. by doing the ray triangle and ray bounding box intersection calculations. Using the same methodology as Microsoft Xbox, the RT Core is effectively a 34 teraflop shader, and Turing has an equivalent of 45 teraflops while ray tracing. Even with RT Core, the amount of time consumed is significant, so RT Core and shaders have to run concurrently. Even then, 20 milliseconds is only 50 frames per second and still a step back in performance relative to previous generations. This is where the Tensor Core and DLSS come in. Rendering to a lower resolution, then using AI and super um, fast we don't know, Jordy. to effectively um, double frame rate. It's more than now likely there will be, tracing, but not on get release. high resolution and high frame rate or at maybe the same will, time. But That's we'll see. the magic of the three processors of RTX. Turing was our first generation RTX GPU, combining ray tracing programmable shading, and AI. The flagship Turing had a ton of processing power, 11 shader teraflops, 34 RT teraflops, and 89 tensor teraflops. Let me show you our new RTX GPU. Here we go. Ampere is a giant leap in performance. Ampere does two shader calculations per clock versus one on Turing, mm -hmm. 30 shader teraflops compared to 11. Ampere doubles ray triangle intersection throughput, Ampere's RT core delivers 58 RT teraflops compared to Turing's 34. So what, 50 And Ampere's increase? new Tensor Core automatically identifies and removes less important DNN weights. And the new Tensor Core hardware processes the sparse network at twice the rate of Turing. 238 Tensor Flops compared to 89. Ladies and gentlemen, NVIDIA's new Ampere GPU, our second generation RTX, 28 billion transistors built on Samsung 8 in NVIDIA custom processors. Oh, Samsung. All three processors double rates over Turing. Instead of TM, TCMs, It TMSC connects to Micron's new G6X, the fastest memories ever made. The days of just relying on transistor performance it's interesting they went over. with Samsung. Yet Ampere is an incredible two times the performance and energy efficiency of Turing. At NVIDIA, we use every engineering lever to squeeze every drop of performance out of the system. Wow. From architecture, custom process design, circuit design, logic design, packaging, custom series I.O., memory, power and thermal design, PCB design, software and algorithms, thousands of engineers per generation, billions of dollars. Full stack engineering and extreme craftsmanship is the hallmark of our GPUs. Our performance, energy efficiency and low power are all world class. And real application performance highlights Ampere's new RT core. The more ray tracing is done, the greater the Ampere speed up. 50%. Ampere RT core doubles ray intersection processing. Its ray tracing is processed concurrently Not with double, shading. Almost. And Ampere can render cinematic images with motion blur eight times faster than Turing. Relative performance. Let's take a look at Ampere in action. At our Kitchen GTC a few months ago, we showed Marbles, the world's first fully path traced photorealistic real-time graphics. It was running on our highest-end Turing Quadro RTX 8000. Turing was doing 720p, 25 frames per second. Wow. Today, we're gonna run an enhanced version of Marbles with even more special effects, and it is running at 1440p, oh, that's good 30 frames yourself. per second, over four times the, the performance. water blocks are pretty good. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy Marbles at night. Marbles is entirely path traced, no rasterization, all real time. There are hundreds of area lights, including spherical area lights. There's no pre baking, everything is dynamic. Wow. The depth of field is film quality and beautiful. 
everything is dynamic. Diffuse GI, all dynamic. There are hundreds of rigid bodies, 80 million triangles. Materials are physically accurate, physics simulation and volumetric rendering in real time. DLSS 2.0 is doing the super resolution and AI denoising. <laughs> I mean, just buy it for the marbles, right? Three, two and a half thousand dollars Australian. <laughs> oh, impressive. I'm impressed. Ah. Let's compare marbles Turing and marbles Ampere. You can see dramatic visual quality jump of Ampere. Marbles on Turing runs at 720p, 25 frames per second. Marbles on Ampere runs at 1440p, 30 frames per second. More than Ooh. four times the performance. Okay. And Ampere even did area lights and depth of field. A giant performance wow. leap. Today's games are giant worlds, <laughs> indoor and out, Cyberpunk. with photogrammetry, dense geometry, and lots of characters. Is that crisis? Games are over 200 gigabytes and getting bigger. This is like 50,000 songs or 400 hours of streaming video. Games have pushed PC, I.O. and file systems to the breaking point. CPUs copy files from disk and decompress the game image. This is fine when the storage system was slow, 50 to 100 megabytes per second. Now with Gen 4 PCI Express and solid state drives, PCs can transfer data at seven gigabytes per second, 100 times faster. CPU copying data to memory and decompressing game images is now the bottleneck. Decompressing data from 100 megabytes per second hard drives takes only a few CPU cores. However, decompressing from 7 gigabytes per second SSDs on PCIe Gen 4 <laughs> takes over 20 <laughs> CPU cores. Today, we're announcing NVIDIA RTX I.O. with three new advances. New I.O. APIs for fast loading and streaming directly from SSD to GPU memory. GPU lossless decompression. And collaboration with Microsoft on direct storage for Windows. That wow. streamlines the transfer of data from storage to GPU memory. Sony Microsoft, you're With dead. RTXIO, <laughs> PlayStation 5 is dead. Instantly. Picking up where you left off will be instant. This is a very big deal for next generation gaming. <laughs> Let me show you Ampere in action in one of the most anticipated games of 2020. Cyberpunk? CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk. Bloody right it is. is called Scenes of Cyberpunk RTX. It shows ray trace reflections, diffuse illumination, shadows, ambient occlusion, and DLSS 2.0. Enjoy. Oh, oh. You had my curiosity, now you have my attention. Go clubbing to that. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> our new flagship GPU, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080, powered by Ampere, second generation RTX architecture. Thirty eighty, okay. Are they gonna announce the thirty ninety? Six ninety. Oh, they did have a six ninety. Nine eighty. Here it is. Show me what you got. Oh, bigger chip.
what it's going to mean. You might be able to get really small water-cooled ones. Because the whole fan on the back is actually the Nvidia kind of redundant. The RTX 3080. I have one right here. Let me show it to you. It's not in the oven. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it is beautiful. It's huge. Look at That's this. That's what it is. <laughs> the RTX 3080. It is wonderfully crafted. It's going to look beautiful in your PC. Hey, sounds like bloody... Up. Now let me tell Tim you about Cook. some of the other exciting technologies inside. Turing used G6, the fastest memories at that time. The industry thought that was the limit. For Ampere, we had to push through that limit. Working with Micron, we designed the world's first memories with PAM4 signaling. Pulse amplitude modulation. Mm -hmm. With four voltage levels that encode two bits of data each. 0001 1011. Each voltage step is only 250 millivolts. So in the same period of time, That's a G6X massive car. can transmit twice as much data as wow. G6. PAM4 is extreme signaling technology, and it's just becoming used in high-speed networking. The Ampere thermal architecture is the first ever flow-through design, working harmoniously with PC chassis cooling system, pulling in cool air from the outside, flowing through the GPU, and pushing hot air straight out the chassis. To right allow room for a fan to flow <laughs> air directly through the module, our engineers architect a super dense PCB design that is 50% smaller than previous while adding the bigger Ampere GPUs, HDMI 2.1, PCI Express 4.0, and G6X. There are two independently controlled fans. The bracket front fan pulls cool air from the bottom and pushes the heated air out through the graphics card brackets. A backside pull through fan passes cool air over the fins of the heat pipe and directs the hot air to the top and back of the chassis to be exhausted by the system fan. The 3080 flow through system is three times quieter and keeps the GPU 20 degrees cooler than the Turing design. Sounds it can cool gonna need 90 it. <laughs> watts more than Turing. The generational leap is ultimately the most important factor of new GPUs. Yeah. A significant technology advance is needed to inspire content content developers to create the next level of content and for the install base to upgrade. Let's see how the 3080 stacks up the previous generation architectures on the latest graphics intensive games. 3080 is faster than 2080 Ti. 3080 is twice the performance of 2080 at the same price. What? Ampere is the biggest generational leap we've ever had. Ladies and gentlemen. That's not the price, is it? NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080, our new flagship GPU. Powered by Ampere, our second generation RTX GPU architecture. Incredible amounts of processing in the shader, RT ray tracing core, and Tensor Core for processing AI. Mm. 10 gigabytes of G6X, twice the processing power of 2080, and at the same price, starting at 699. Available September 17th. 699. One of our most popular GPUs is the 70 series. 970, 1070, 2070 were all hugely popular. You're gonna love the new RTX 3070. Faster than yeah. the 2080 Ti, the Turing Enthusiast GPU priced at $1,200. Ladies and gentlemen, the new GeForce RTX 3070. Let me show it to you. Oh, it's a very work nice. Of 20 shader teraflops. Yeah, the price is okay. RT Same as last, se last season. <laughs> and last 163 generation. teraflops tensor core for AI processing. With 8 gigabytes of G6, yeah, RTX 3070 is faster yeah, than right. the $1,200 RTX 2080 Ti. Holy shit. Starting at 499. <laughs> they Available fixed the October. prices. AMD's giving them Every a Every generation, we pack in our best ideas to increase performance while introducing new features that enhance image quality. Every couple of generations, the stars align, as it did with Pascal, and we get a giant generational leap. Pascal was known as the perfect 10. Pascal was a huge success and set a very high bar. It took the super family so of Turing good. to meaningfully exceed Pascal on game performances without ray tracing. With ray tracing turned on, Pascal, using programmable shaders to compute ray triangle intersections, fell far behind Turing's RT core. Yeah. Wow. And Turing with ray tracing on reached the same performance as Pascal with ray tracing off. 
On a technical basis, this was a huge achievement. The <laughs> yes, images are far more beautiful, and reflection and shadow artifacts are gone. But gamers want it more. They want every generation to be we more realistic frames. and higher God's frame sakes. rates at the same time. So we double down on everything. Twice the shader, twice the ray tracing, and twice the tensor core. The triple double. Wow. Ampere knocks the daylights out of Pascal on ray tracing. And even with ray tracing on, crushes Pascal on frame rate. To all my Pascal gamer friends, it is safe to upgrade now. That's me. <laughs> Amazing ray tracing games are coming. Activision and developer Treyarch I are launching it. a new Call of Duty on November 13th. It's a masterpiece and it looks incredible. There are dynamic lights, ray tracing, shadows and ambient occlusion, DLSS 2.0, and NVIDIA Reflex super low latency technology. Hey, the Bunny, last Call be of a Duty sold an 30, amazing 60, 30 million released copies. later. Activision put together this trailer of never before seen footage. Ooh, ooh, this is Enjoy. cool. Hello. I love me some cod. It's fish cod. <laughs> They did, but I think they'll leave it till later, or maybe another day. They should say it today. The 3090 should be released today. It'll be like a similar to like a Titan price, though, I think. But maybe it'll be priced at a thousand American. Oh, four, it'll be at 1400. So it'll still be two and a half, I think. Unless they price it at a thousand. $1,000 for a 3090 would be neat. Oh, American dollars. Let me talk to you <laughs> about one more thing. Several years ago, we started building the Titan. Here we pushing go. the GPU to the absolute limit to create the best graphics card of that generation. It was built in limited quantities only through NVIDIA. The distribution was limited. Mm -hmm. The demand surprised us. Creatives were making 4K movies, rendering cinematics. Researchers built workstations for data science and AI. Bloggers built broadcast workstations. Flight and racing simulation fans built sim rigs. Nobody built that shit. There is clearly a need <laughs> for a giant GPU that is available all over the world. So we made a giant ampere. Ladies and gentlemen, the RTX 3090. It's in the oven. It's in the okay. oven. <laughs> Come here, Papa. What the? F Alrighty. Holy shit! Thirty ninety is a beast. A ferocious GPU. A BF GPU. Thirty six shader teraflops. That's sixty nine giant RT teraflops. Two hundred and eighty five tensor teraflops, and it comes with a massive twenty four <sighs> gigabytes of G six X. It comes with a silent September 24th. A three slot okay. dual axle flow through design. 10 times quieter and keeps the GPU 30 degrees cooler than the Titan RTX design. <laughs> but there's more. <laughs> the 3090 is so big that for the very first time, we can play games at 60 frames per second in 8K. This is what? insane. <laughs> because it's impossible for us to show you what it looks like on the stream, we invited some friends to check it out. Roll the clip. What? What? 8K at 60 frames. Woo. I've never been more excited to do anything. Hey, Logitech. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Oh my what are they God. watching? No. What's the screen? This is incredible, dude. This is amazing. The resolution on this is silly. My God. You can see wear and tear on the treads. Look at this. Why is it so detailed? Sony, right, Microsoft, right, right, right. Move fast dead. This is 8K, sir. I can see everything. Oh, I need mean, to dollars card. Not a lot of people have seen something like this. This is so realistic. I feel like I'm really in battle. This is insane. Die, I want to look at the pretty things. I wonder what the TV there is. Dude, the ray tracing is insane on this. These are the sizzle reels that you see. This is basically hacks. And then it's like, it'll never look like that. But it does. <laughs> I'm like looking across the vistas, the grand vistas that are happening right now. Holy sh! Look at this. This feels like a Disneyland experience. Oh, it is so smooth. It's butter. Oh, it's smooth as dude. I can't believe it's not butter. 
I mean, this is game right. changing. Who's this getting a 3090? I mean, My come on, guys. Off, You're gonna have to wow. get the 3090. It's been 20 years since the NVIDIA GPU introduced programmable shit. Shit. The GPU revolutionized modern computer graphics. Developers jumped on and invented clever algorithms, like Huge. shaders that simulate realistic Huge materials, cards. or post-processing effects for soft shadows, ambient occlusion, and reflections. Developers pushed the limits of rasterization beyond anyone's expectations. Meanwhile, NVIDIA GPU processing increased a stunning 100,000-fold Gaming became a powerful One, four, technology driver. Thirty-nine. Gamers I'm with you, MMB9. And gaming pushed into all aspects of entertainment and culture. If the last 20 years was amazing, the next 20 will seem nothing short of science fiction. They didn't price it. They didn't tell you the Today's price. Today's Ampere launch is a giant step into the future. This is our greatest generational leap ever. Hey, Ultimus Maximus. The second generation G'day. NVIDIA RTX, fusing programmable shading Ray tracing and artificial intelligence gives us photorealistic <laughs> graphics Chunky. and the highest frame rates Chunky. at the same time. Once the holy grail of computer graphics, ray tracing is now the standard. And Ampere is going to bring you joy beyond gaming. NVIDIA Reflex to improve your response time. NVIDIA Broadcast turns any room into a studio. And Omniverse Machinima turns you into an animated filmmaker. Holy crap. We are super pleased with 3070, 3080, and 3090, the first three members of the Ampere generation. You're going to feel a boost like never before. Oh, I should hope so. I can't so. wait to go forward 20 <laughs> years to see what RTX started. Homes will have holodecks. We will beam ourselves through time holodex. and space, Ooh. traveling at the speed oh. of light, sending photons, not atoms. In this future, G-Force is your holodeck, your light speed starship, ourselves through time and space traveling at the speed of light we got sending photons not atoms in this future g-force is your holodeck your light speed starship your time machine in this future we will look back and realize that it started here thank you for joining us today wow and to all of our fans for celebrating the arrival of ampere okay i am impressed color me impressed <laughs> You know, I just, um, <laughs> I couldn't wait. I had to uh, jump onto Photoshop. I'll share, I'll share my screen because it's ridiculous. Where is it? Um, oh, I just, so much to take in. So much to take in. Um, here you go. Enjoy me trying to make big chungus out of the graphics card. <laughs> I just, I, I can't, I can't fathom how, how much, like, money this is going to cost. Because it's just going to be ridiculous. But this is what I've come up with. <laughs> um, okay, so AMD has to, like, come up with something much better than this. And, uh, and what is it, not Ampere, but RDNA 2 has to literally beat the 3090 or at least the 3080 at a, at a much lower price i think that's all it has to do so um yeah yeah what are your guys thoughts um who's getting the 3080 i think 3080 3070 is probably going to be the more affordable one um i reckon it'll probably be the one most people buy the 3070 um and in more than likely the 3090 will be that titan but the fact that they said it's going to be available more um, is probably impressive. And uh, Joseph says, biggest leap ever. Yep, pretty much. There's nothing, I don't think we've ever seen a leap as big as uh, this one. And one of the things that blew my mind uh, was the fact that they didn't skimp on the performance. Because sometimes you see they release a card and they go, oh, look at all these extras that you get. And unfortunately, and this time they didn't do it. They, they released some extra features. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not too much whiskey. Come on guys, just chill out, chill out. So yeah, anyway, happy days. I'm probably going to try and get the 3090 and see if, uh, well, I'm going to try and buy it, see if it's available in Australia, but the prices I think are going to be a bit ridiculous, but I'm hoping that, um, people, you know, people buy it because if, if Nvidia sees that it's worthwhile making, they'll keep making it better, but I need AMD to come to the party. I don't know about you guys, but without AMD, 
we are not going to have this happen again. They'll do what they did with the first generation where they released a super and this, and obviously the first gen in the super, this cruddy version. Um, MMB9 says, do you think AMD is actually going to release a decent GPU this time and scare Jensen enough to make him this generous? Okay, the pricing was a bit of a surprise. I think we can all admit nobody was expecting the prices to be that competitive. And comparably, I think, um, and I'm surprised they did that because Nvidia's last generation pricing was just beyond a joke. It was expensive. The performance of the RTX was not there as they showed. It's beautiful, but it just doesn't help. And then they go and do this. The 3000 series is priced the same price as the first generation, not the super of the RTX 2000. And that's amazing. So now you're AMD, right? What do you do? You have to either outbid them on price and try and take that lower area, I guess the lower group of people who might not be buying the 3080, the 3070, something, you know, 500, 600, $700. But, or you go the other route and try and compete at the top level. And I just don't think AMD has anything right now um, to, to, to match that. I mean, DLSS was built by NVIDIA. Therefore, their performance will be better for the, first, for the next couple of generations. They will have to perform better because they're the ones that built it, right? Now, obviously, uh, AMD has their own version and I think they can use DLSS too. I think it's open source in that regard. Um, correct, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. So I think at the end of the day, AMD is gonna struggle but I hope they don't because I want competition because competition is good for us consumers. Without competition, we will not be getting good prices. And for the first time, it seems like Nvidia is gonna, I don't know, if last generation was expensive. They're kind of like, maybe they did this thing where they released all these GPUs, the 2000 series and said, put all this crazy dollar amounts on it. And then they're like, oh, but then when we do it next year, we'll lower it so it seems like we're generous. Maybe that's, I mean, that's a bit too far-fetched. Um, to Mac, uh, Awesomeness Maximus says, I have two water-cooled 2080 Ti. Seriously? Wow, that's expensive. <laughs> Imagine that. Now, the 3070 is just one of your 2080 Ti's. Isn't that just, like, amazing? Um, we've got uh, Retro says they put in more optimizations thus they have a slight advantage. Yes, that's that's right. I mean, they, they made it for their own cause, for their own art, whatever, RT course, whatever they want to call it. And so the next company that comes along will have to sort of pick up the pieces and learn what they have done. Uh, and NVIDIA is not really known to share their knowledge with other companies. Um, Bob says 3090 starting price at 14.99. Did they announce that or is that just somewhere in, a, in an article or something? Um, I'd love to know if that is the price because 14.99 is like two and a half Australian, two and a half thousand Australian dollars. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a lot of money. But can you put a price on high frame rates? Can you put a price on playing 8K, 8K, 8K video games at 60 frames? I don't think you can. Um, we've got a couple of more comments. Um, MMB nice to expect reviews to poke holes in the 3000 series performance claims. Impressive nonetheless. Well, I should hope so. I think it's the job of reviewers to poke holes in actual products. At, I mean, at the end of the day, that's the job, right? You review something, you know, I, I pick up an item and I review it and go, well, I used it and this is the issues that I found and this is what I like about it. And so unless it says, you know, sponsored post underneath it, then you should be able to trust that reviewer. Um, so yeah, fourteen ninety nine is about two and a half thousand dollars, and I mean the American dollar hasn't actually gone up too much, so I think it's actually not bad. I think it's quite reasonable comparably to what it used to be. Um, so yeah, um, what here we go. Retro Game says without competition, there is no good pricing, and there would be less demand on the new technologies. I don't know if demand is affected by it because there's some companies create demand themselves so like i'll give you an example evolve skateboards right um they do and i suppose the pandemic created that but evolve skateboards has always been expensive and they create some of the best um 
electric skateboards out there. They're they're in east east coast. They're Australian, and so when they have their stock, it goes really quickly. But there are still other manufacturers, but they still sell out. Now, before all the other manufacturers, the Chinese manufacturers, people still flocked to them and sold out. I think the fact that it's available and people are willing to pay for it. Um, you know, if, if the only way to get an electric car was Tesla, then people would be buying Teslas, right? But more competition doesn't mean Tesla's gonna get less demand. You still have to order it. Um, uh, Retro says reviewers need to grab the cons and pros, otherwise it really isn't review and more of a bias. Well, absolutely. Um, one of the ways, um, one of the ways, I, I guess from my experience from doing reviews is that I don't take any money from um, when people send me products. I don't. I, pff, they don't pay me. That's the point. I get to review it, and I don't have any obligation to them. Um, and obviously, like Asus, I send back the product. I don't get to keep it, so there's no there's no exchange of goods. And you know, the only the thing I th I, th I don't know if people follow it in Australia, but in Australia, there's a law that says if you are reviewing a product, you and it's paid for, you have to actually put that it's sponsored or somebody's paying you. So an ed editorial, I think, is the word. And so, you know. If you see a post saying that, I think it's the, what's the M AMCA, AMCA, yeah, Australian Media Corporation Association or whatever it is, they should be following up on this stuff, but people obviously lie and stuff, but you'd hope that most reviewers are honest. Uh, MMB says, I predict 2,399 for the Founders Edition 3090. Um, yeah, that's, that sounds about right. 1,400, let's say 1,400 American converts to, what does it convert to? Let me. Let me have a quick Google, uh, 1400 USD to AUD, uh, $2,000 to add tax at 10%, $200. And then let's say another 200 for the marker. Yep, yep, that sounds about right. Um, Retro says, I meant with the more higher end cards, not the lower, oh, sorry, yep. So higher end cards, there's, there's always somebody like, okay, the best example I can give you is, let's say you are a, Oh, this is actually a buddy of mine. So a friend of mine works in uh, electrical high high current, or what is it called? Yeah, very big electrical power lines, right? They use um, Quadro cards to power their computers to then design and um, basically, I think they press a button, render it, whatever, not visually, but calculate all the stuff and then they have a plan that they can then give it to the client or whoever it is, right? I'm describing this really badly. It is really late. I'm being really horrible. And so they need a lot of power. Now, every time they have to build this computer, it's thousands and thousands of dollars. And if there is a car that's high end and they can achieve this, they will go for it. And so in this case, if there is an RTX 3090, they can do the same as a Quadro or you know, comparably to a Titan, then they'll buy it. Um, you know, it's, it's create, most of the high end is used by people who make money. Like if, if somebody's making a hundred thousand dollars a year and they require a $2,000 card, that's not really, they're, they're just like, Oh, okay. I need that. Um, people who game won't buy it. And yes, of course there's less people who, um, who spend lots of thousands of dollars on these cards, but obviously it isn't because <laughs> they're bringing out this 3090 and saying it's because the demand for Titan was so high. Um, uh, let's have a look at some comments. Um, Jordy says, I have a Lenovo laptop with an i7 8500U, 1.8 gigahertz. That's, that's not, not bad, I mean, for a laptop. Um, Wood Elf, how much is an 8K TV? Okay, let's have a look at that. Let's go to, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, so, uh, JB Hi-Fi, JB Hi-Fi has an 8K TV, I believe, should do. Uh, TVs, all TVs, and let's have a look at 8K. There you go. There's nine TVs available right now. Um, LG Nano, three and a half, three three thousand eight hundred. That's not bad for 8K TV, right? 65 inch. When's the last? Like, don't do you guys remember? It was like ten thousand dollars for like what, like a 55 inch TV OLED back in the day? Well, I mean, there's one right here, 8K, 85 inch, that's giant. That's a huge. Um, what's the cheapest if I go uh, priced low? 
Okay, so 3,795, an LG nanocell. Um, um, let's go into it, let's see how, many, how much refresh rate they have. Uh, 100 hertz, 100 hertz. Not bad at all. And it say they, they said that you can play it at 8K 60 frames. So, you know, you probably could. Probably could, would look good, but I would never dare to play a first person shooter on a TV like that. I think my eyes would blow up. <laughs> um, we've got a couple of more comments here. Uh, when uh, Awesome Maximus says, when the 3090 comes out, I hope they have water blocks available. Um, yeah, I'm hoping so too, because I will have to pick up a water block because I have a loop that goes into my CPU and I have to, I have to do that, unfortunately. Um, MMB says, when 20 series launched, order was live on a video website mid presentation. This time, nothing is happening on the website. Well, that's apparently because production only started in August. So I don't think they have enough stuff. <laughs> uh, 37, 80, 90 all have launch date of 17th of September. Yeah, okay. Yep, cool. So 17th of September. Is that for America or is that for the world? I wonder if you have to like order on a video website or if some of the. Um, uh, local shops will have it. Um, Wood Elf says that, and that's good. I think that's the TV, right? Um, awesome says, Max, you need 8K 120 hertz. No, you need a PlayStation 5 for that, because apparently, you know, they're going to do like 120 hertz at 4K or something like that, which I doubt, but we'll see what happens. Jody says, it's okay, but not for gaming, rendering, and stream recording. Oh, the laptop. Yep, no worries. Um, yes, you might need a stronger CPU for that. Um, Yogi Bear, <laughs> I love the name. Maybe time to ditch my FX 5200. You know what? The fact that you've replied to this, that you've commented here, I think you're all right. <laughs> just, just save it, mate. You'll be all right. Uh, Roger says about 2000 in UK pounds for the 3090, I'm guessing. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to save this photo of Chungus. I'm going to post it on Twitter. Hopefully somebody can enjoy my late night photoshopping. Um, and unless anybody else has anything interesting to say, I might go to bed. <laughs> Thank you very much everyone for jumping in and, and, and joining this late night stream. I hope you enjoyed having a yarn and, and listening to my grubby voice. And I hope you have a good week. And we'll see you all on Saturday if you watch the um, State of the Beanstalk. Um, we'll be doing our stream as per usual. And... Um, not sure if you guys are subscribed to the channel, but make sure you're subscribed to get notifications when random live events happen. Not that, not that I suppose I would create the live events, but you know, people would create them and I'll just watch them. It's good fun. Thanks everyone. Thanks Wood Elf. That's MMB, Retro, Yogi Bear, Jordi, Awesome, Maximus. Uh, who else was here? I think I did. I miss anybody. Retro Games. Bob. Thanks, Bob. Um... Joseph, thanks, mate. Zan Bunny, oh, good to see you. I remember you from the last stream. Thurian, hey, mate, how did I miss you? Hey, hey, Thurian. Uh, God, I'm trying to look through everybody who's here today. I think that's it. If I miss anybody, I apologize. Ah, yes, the gentleman from Melbourne, uh, or gentleman, I, I don't know, uh, who said it's 2 a.m. I cannot read your name, but hello and goodbye. Have a good night, everybody. Enjoy your week. Bye. And it's sleep time. God.